Welcome to the first video for the IB Diploma Program in Computer Science. In this first video, we're going to start right at the beginning and identify the context from which a new system is planned. And this is from Topic 1, System Fundamentals. Okay, as you can see here, the, we have a breakdown of the standard level and the higher level. Four topics for standard level, and then there's three topics and a case study for the, um, for the higher level. Okay, but as I say, we're going to be looking at topic one, system fundamentals, and this is broken down into several parts. 1.1 being systems in organizations, which is broken down into these seven parts. Then we move on to user focus, three parts in here, system backup, common causes of data loss, and software deployment. Okay, but we'll start with systems in organizations, and we're going to identify the context, as I said before, for which a new system is planned. Okay, so let's begin. Here we go. We've got frustration because we've got a system that's no longer living up to what we need. We begin our journey looking at why companies will consider implementing new computer systems. In our rapidly evolving technological landscape, businesses often find themselves at a crossroads, faced with the decision to upgrade their existing system. Okay, technology moves very, very quickly. Today, we'll explore the compelling reasons behind this crucial choice from outdated and inefficient systems to the pursuit of heightened productivity and an enhanced output will unravel the complexities that drive organizations to embrace innovation. Um, but additionally, we'll touch upon the impact of these changes on the workforce and the social aspects and the broader business environment. Okay. Okay, as I mentioned, why would a company um, consider getting a new computer system? Well, the old system is inefficient. Over time, technology evolves rapidly, as we all know. Those people who maybe have a, a game system at home went out to the PS5, and it wasn't long ago since people were using the PS3 and PS2, and even before that, I remember using the PS1. The computer system that a company might have used a few years ago is not necessarily optimized for current workflows and requirements. Inefficiency could manifest in slower processing times, frequent crashes could be happening, or a lack of integration with newer software and technologies. You might buy a new printer for your, for your company and realize that you can't use it because um, none of the computers support the drivers that come with that particular printer. The old system is outdated or no longer suitable for its original purpose. Yes, sometimes older systems were designed for specific purposes that are no longer relevant or were built on outdated technology. In such cases, companies might find that they need to replace the system with one that aligns better with their current business needs. We also need to look at improving productivity, efficiency, and quality. Impl implementing a new system can significantly enhance productivity. It can enhance efficiency and the quality of the company's output. New systems often come with features and capabilities that streamline processes, automate um, repetitive tasks, and provide real-time data for informed decision-making. Um, we can reduce system flaws and uh, minimize costs. Older systems might be prone to errors, security vulnerabilities, and maintenance challenges. Replacing them with modern systems can reduce these flaws and associated costs, such as ongoing maintenance and security risks. A well-designed new system can be more reliable and secure, therefore more cost-effective over time. We need to look at implementation time and factors. The time required to implement a new system varies um, based on several factors, obviously including the complexity of the system, the hardware and the software costs, and the size and the skill of the, de uh, the development team. Additionally, the existing environment, including data migration and integration with other systems, can affect this timeline. Obviously, employees need to be trained, and there may be scope for redundancies. There might be job losses. Employees may need training to adapt to the new technologies and workflows. Training is essential to ensure a smooth transition and maximize the benefits of a new system. However, as I've just mentioned, it is also important to acknowledge that some jobs may become redundant as automation and efficiency improvements take place. Companies must manage this aspect sensitively, um, possibly offering re um, retaining or alternative employment opportunities for affected employees. Um, so in summary, we, we have our brand new system, as you can see here, with the computers and the servers and the laptops and everything connected together. But implementing a new system is a strategic decision made by companies to address various challenges, improve operations, and stay competitive. It involves considerations related to technology, efficiency, costs, and the impact of our employees. A well-planned transition to a new system can yield long-term benefits for the organization. 
obviously future proofing an investment and making sure you're keeping up with the times okay of course some companies don't need this some companies can rely on an old windows 95 machine and everything's good the majority of companies will need to keep abreast with what's going on in terms of technology okay so there are some key issues to consider when deciding whether a system update or upgrade is worth pursuing um, i've got five things outlined here first of all um, compatibility between old and new systems we need to sort out strategies for merging systems the migration of data hosting systems where is um, data going to be held and the installation processes okay so i'm going to break these down into smaller chunks so first of all compatibility between old and new systems so you can see here we've got a calculator and, uh, and a little macbook ensuring compatibility between old and new systems is crucial it involves assessing whether the new system can seamlessly integrate with existing infrastructure software and data um, compatibility issues can lead to data loss functionality gaps and operational disruptions a comprehensive um, compatibility analysis and we'll talk about this a little bit later helps identify potential challenges and informs the decision making process we need to look at strategies for merging systems together there might be some old or some of our old equipment that does need to be kept and does need to be able to merge and um, and talk to any new systems we put in place this might involve determining how data and processes will flow between the two systems managing data consistently and minimizing disruptions to daily operations okay obviously data migration data migration is a critical aspect of system updates it involves transferring the data from the old system to the new one while maintaining data integrity and security we don't want any of this um, information to get lost or get um, into the hands of hackers or anybody who might um, might want to steal it data migration can be complex and errors can lead to data loss or corruption as i've just said companies must um, establish robust data migration plans that include data mapping and validation is the data that you've sent from one um, one machine the same as what's been received by the by the new machine and testing to ensure a successful and accurate transfer of data has taken place we need to consider hosting systems where are we going to hold our data okay this is important considerations companies can choose between on-premise hosting cloud-based hosting such as um, google or apple or hybrid solutions each option has its advantages and of course its challenges such as cost scalability and maintenance the choice should align with the company's specific needs and specific budget and long-term it strategy finally we've got the installation processes obviously failing to address these adequately can result in project delays cost overruns and operational disruptions it could be a very expensive process therefore a thorough evaluation of um, compatibility merging strategies data migration hosting options and installation procedures is essential to make an informed decision about whether to proceed with the update or the upgrade and how to do it effectively and we said before efficiently okay we then move on to several key factors that also need considering in terms of the roles and the activities of the users will these change the cost and budget limits the resources we're going to need and what we have already the delivery time and the comp compatibility with the old system with the data that's stored in the old system just a little bit of sort of overview of what we've already talked about let's take a look at the roles and activities of users obviously we need to have permissions um, we need to determine what users um, does these things even modify and what you what a user has access to whether or not they can delete data and update data on the system um, this should be aligned with the roles and permissions um, of the existing system security implement security measures such as encryption authentication and authorization to protect sensitive data and prevent unauthorized access uh, partitions if a system is used by different departments or teams consider how data and functionality should be partitioned to ensure um, efficiency and data segregation we can also look at collaborative work determine how users will collaborate with it within the system including features like file sharing um, such as google drive um, real-time editing and um, communication tools what about resources hardware and software we need to assess the hardware requirements what we're going to need in terms of computers in terms of technology including servers workstations network infrastructures to ensure the system can perform efficiently and this is sort of future proof and handle expected or future loads okay and again the software um, we need to choose appropriately software components including the operating system of our computers 
should they all be the same? Database management systems and application software that aligns with the organization's needs and goals. There are costs and there's going to be budget limits. So you need to consider the budget available for the system development, implementation and ongoing maintenance. But we need to prioritize features and functionality based on budget constraints and the organization's strategic objective. How much money have we got to spend on this? And then how long will it take to um, implement this new system? We need to determine the project timelines and deadlines for the system development and deployment. Maybe create a project plan, giving us milestones and setting an end date. Is it compatible with the old system? Is the data we've got on the old system compatible with new software? If we've been creating something on um, Microsoft Office um, 2007, will that, will that work with um, Office 2023? Will there be problems with things like macros and essential tools that we've been using in the past? Finally, finally, this is an example that I talked about earlier, conducting a feasibility study. Something such as a TELOS report, T-E-L-O-S, um, could help the, to analyze a project and its potential based on the following criteria. T and tell us the technical feasibility of the project, the economic feasibility, the um, legal feasibility, the operational feasibility, and finally, the schedule feasibility. So I'm going to talk about these briefly just to finish off. Obviously, the technical feasibility, this part looks at whether the project is possible from a technical standpoint. Do we have the necessary technology, skills, and equipment to make it happen? Is it technically possible to achieve the project's goals? Okay, um, economic. Here we figure out if, it, if the project makes financial sense. We calculate the costs involved and estimate the potential profits or benefits. This helps decide if the project is a good investment. Um, legal, we need to make sure the project does, doesn't break any laws or any regulations. This part of the report examines whether, whether the project complies with all the necessary rules and the laws. If there are any legal issues, the project might not be feasible. Um, operational, um, we look at how the project will fit into the current operations of the company or organization and if it's practical to implement. And finally, the schedule. I suppose it's like planning a trip. Can you get to all the places that you want to or wish to go to in the time that you have? Okay, can we do everything we want to do in the time frame that we've got? Here we figure out if the project can be finished on time. So that would be an example of a feasibility study, which is basically a set of checklists. Is the project worth doing, considering these five factors? Okay, I'm gonna finish off with an exam question uh, from 1.1.1. Identify two features, and you've seen them throughout this presentation, that need to be considered when planning a new computer system for an organization. Well, there are several, but I've chosen five just to talk about the integration with current resources, and when designing a new computer system, so it's crucial to consider how it fits in with our existing tech tools. We, um, we want to maximize what we already have, like computers and software. This helps us save money and ensures a smoother transition to the new system. And the second point, obviously ethical and social impact. We must also think about how the new system might affect people in the organization. Will it change their roles or possibly lead to job losses? It's vital to ensure fairness and ethical treatment. Additionally, we need to be mindful of data privacy and security to follow the laws and rules. Okay, so just to, just to summarize, so when planning a new computer system, we need to ensure it works well with our current technology and it's fair to our people. We also need to be responsible um, with data and follow the rules. These things are very important. Okay, and that is it for 1.1.1. Um, there will be a lot of videos coming your way. So if you've enjoyed this one, please um, subscribe and please stay tuned. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.